So here, we're going to start talking about how do we make a series and why do we start making series. Uh, so to do this, remember that when we reviewed the geometric series, note series, not sequence, series, uh, we know that a geometric series will converge to its first term over 1 minus the common ratio when its common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. So let's say that we have a geometric series where 1 is the first term, and we don't know the common ratio, so we're going to just use a variable, since that represents an unknown value, x. Well, I would have my first term multiplied by my common ratio, so the next term I'm adding is x, multiplied by my common ratio, x squared, multiplied by my common ratio, x cubed, multiplied by my common ratio, x to the fourth, and I keep doing that, and I can see, well, I'm going to be doing x to the n as I go, and this would be my series, n would be starting at 0 to infinity of x to the n, but because this is a geometric series, I could say that this is approaching or converging first term over 1 minus the common ratio. But this is only true if my common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. This is what's beautiful is we have generated an infinite geometric series that can represent the function 1 over 1 minus x as long as x is between negative 1 and 1. Okay. This is what's called a power series uh, because we're using powers to generate this. And we've created something then that, let's say I wanted to estimate 1 over 1 minus x using this series. Well, I, could say, I can't obviously use the whole infinite uh, series, but I could say, well, what about to the fourth degree, uh, the fourth degree term? Well, then I could say, well, one plus x plus x squared plus x to the third plus x to the fourth is approximately one over one minus x, as long as x is between negative one and one. And now we've circled back to what we did with Taylor polynomials. So this is another way for us to generate polynomials of whatever accuracy I want by just using more terms to create, to estimate functions. Now, we are limited in the types of functions we can do with this, but if we look at some examples. So keep in mind what we just figured out here. So let's say I have 1 over 1 plus x, and I want a power series that converges to that value. Well, that would tell me my first term is 1. And from here, that's 1 minus negative x. That would tell me that my common ratio is negative x. So my first term was 1. So I would have 1, my common ratio is negative x. So I just keep multiplying by negative x. And I have negative x to the n. Or if I wrote it out in summation form, n would go from 0 to infinity of negative x to the n. Here, similar idea. I can see that my first term would be x. All of this is 1 minus negative x in my denominator, so that means that my common ratio is negative x. So I get first term is x, my common ratio is negative x. And I am getting x, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to think of this as x times negative x to the n, because it's really me taking my, what I had above and multiplying everything by x. 
and in summation notation, I could still have x starting n starting at zero and have x times negative x to the n. Or if I do some rearranging with my exponents, it's the negative one to the n, x to the n plus one. Now, because all of these are based off of my geometric series, I have to make sure my common ratios are staying within it. So my common ratio of negative x has to be between negative one and one. Getting x by itself, I get that x is still going to be between negative 1 and 1. Well, because my common ratio is the same for my second example, I have to make sure I'm including what x's this works for. So if I continue with some more examples here, it wouldn't hurt if you pause the video and give these three a try uh, before watching the video, but that's up to you, uh, of figuring out what would might be my first term, what would be my common ratio. So first term is A, common ratio would be 2x, so my first term is 7, so I have 7. Common ratio of 2x, 2x, and I'd have 7 times 2x to the n, which n would start at 0, go to infinity, 7 times 2x to the n. And I have to find what this is good for, so the 2x has to be between negative 1 and 1, which means that x is between negative 1 half and positive 1 half. Here, a helpful hint of how I could rewrite 1 over x. My first term is 1. This would be 1 minus negative of x minus 1. So my common ratio is the negative x minus 1, the negative of x minus 1. So I have my first term, then times negative x, the negative of x minus 1, times the negative of x minus 1, times the negative of x minus 1, etc. So I'd have the negative of x minus 1 raised to the n. Again, I have to make sure that my common ratio is between negative 1 and 1. And I get that x is going to have to be between 0 and 2. If you notice, 1 over 3x is just going to be one-third times what we just did. So I can actually, I don't have to go through all of that work again. I already know what power series will go with 1 over x. So I'm just going to take that power series times one-third. And the one-third is not going to affect what x is this works for. So there we go. The last thing to touch on is just like I did one-third times a power series to get a power series for another function, I can use I, I can use mathematical operations to move from one power series to another. And this works with differentiation and integration. So if I wanted to find a power series for 1 over 1 minus x squared, remember, keep this in mind. I'm telling you what x is it's going to be good for because we're not quite ready to figure that part out on our own yet, quite yet. We'll get there. Uh, as to scrap work, the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x 
would be negative 1 over 1 minus x squared times negative 1, which is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So what that tells me is if I want the power series for 1 over 1 minus x squared, I just need to take the derivative of our most basic power series. So I need the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, which I know is 1 over 1 minus x squared. It means I need to take the derivative of 1 plus x plus x squared, so on for x to the n. Well, I can go ahead and just start doing my power rule. Derivative of 1 is 0. I'm not going to write 0. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x. If I had the x cubed, the derivative of that is 3x squared, and so on. When I get to my general term, I can go ahead and take the derivative of that. x to the n requires power rule, so the n comes down in front. Base stays the same. Subtract 1 to get my new exponent. And there is my power series. It also works for integration. So if I have the natural log of 1 plus x, if I had 1 over 1 plus x and I integrated it, this would be the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x. But because x is between negative 1 and 1, I don't actually need the absolute value signs. So that means if I have the power series for 1, 1 over 1 plus x, which would be 1 minus x plus x cubed, or x squared, sorry, minus x cubed, so on to negative x to the end. Well, I can go ahead and do the integral of both sides of the equation for that. And what I end up with would be the natural log of 1 plus x. Again, because my x's are between negative 1 and 1, I don't actually need the absolute values. Antiderivative of 1 is x. Antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth. And then I'd have a negative 1 over n plus 1, I'm sorry, times negative x to the n plus first. And if I take that derivative, n plus 1 cancels the n plus 1, chain will make that a positive. Yep, that's going to work. And there is my power series.